Okay, so um, I don't know if you know this, but um, the original draft of the movie Star Wars was not written by uh, Lucas. The original draft was written by environmentalists, and it's, it's a little bit different. For one thing, it wasn't actually called Star Wars. It was called Star Nonviolent Civil Disobedience. But the plot of Star Wars, for those of you who don't remember, is that the Empire has created this, this giant machine called a Death Star. And it's a machine that's capable of destroying entire planets. In the movie, the rebels find a way to destroy the Death Star. And then at the very end, Luke Skywalker uses the force to get past all the TIE fighters and to drop a, a torpedo down a thermal exhaust port and to blow up the Death Star. Once again, the first draft of the movie, written by environmentalists, was, was a bit different. The rebels didn't actually blow up the Death Star. Instead, they used other methods to slow the intergalactic march of empire. For example, they um, set up programs for people on planets about to be destroyed to produce luxury items like hemp hacky sacks and gourmet coffee for sale to inhabitants of the Death Star. Audience members will also discover there are plans afoot to encourage loads of troopers and other citizens of the Empire to take eco-tours of doomed planets. Their purpose will be to show to one and all that these planets are economically important to the Empire and so should not be destroyed. In a surprise move that will get viewers to the edges of their seats, other groups of rebels file lawsuits against the Empire, attempting to show that the environmental impact statement that Darth Vader was required to file failed to adequately support his decision that blowing up the planet would cause no significant impact. Viewers will thrill to learn of plans to boycott items produced by corporations that have Darth Vader on the board of directors, and they'll leap to their feet in theaters worldwide when they see bags full of letters written directly to Mr. Vader himself, asking that he please not blow up any more planets. Now, we all know that that would be enough not only to bring the Empire to its knees, but to make a damn fine and exciting movie. The thing is, there's more. Thousands of renegade rebels unhappy with what they perceive as toadying on the part of mainstream rebels, decide in a scene guaranteed to bring tears to even the eyes of the most cold-hearted theatergoers to stand on planets about to be destroyed, link arms, and sing Give Peace a Chance. They send DVDs of that to Darth Vader and his boss, the Grand Moff Tarkin, to whom they also send wave after wave of loving kindness. A few of the rebels sneak aboard the Death Star and they lock themselves down to various pieces of equipment, and stirring debates are held on screen as to whether the rebels should voluntarily surrender on approach of the troopers or whether they should remain locked down to the end. And in a brilliant and brave touch of authenticity, the rebels are never able to come to consensus. But there's more. Once inside the Death Star, there's a splinter group breaks off, they burn a couple of transporters and they etch Galaxy Liberation Front. And then another group breaks off from that group and they finally make it to Darth Vader's private room. And when they get there, they sneak up behind him and then they hit him with a vegan cream pie. And the, the directors decided to cut that because it was way too close to a scene in another movie they were developing at the same time called The Plot to Pie Hitler. As the Death Star looms directly overhead, a few of the rebels advocate picking up weapons to fight back. And those rebels are generally shouted down by the pacifist rebels, who argue that attacking those who run the Death Star is just another example of the Empire's harmful philosophy coming in by the back door. If we want to change Darth Vader, they say, we must first become that change ourselves. To change Darth Vader's heart, we must first change our own. We must, above all else, have compassion for Darth Vader, and remember that he, too, was once a child. So finally, Leah, Luke, Han, Chewbacca, and a couple of robots show up, and they tell these others they found a way to blow up the whole Death Star. And the rest of the rebels, of course, are just horrified. There's a scuffle breaks out between Leah, Luke, Han, Chewbacca, and the two robots on one side, and the pacifists on the other. And the pacifists chase those four from the room and from the film, which is not a big deal, because they're minor characters anyway. But anyway, the way the movie ends is that the Death Star looms closer and closer, and then you see the Death Star, and then you see the planet, and then you see the Death Star, you see the planet, and then you see the Death Star, and you see the lasers start to glow this hellish red, and then you see the planet again, and then you see pssst, this little light, and what that is, that's the environmentalist getting away before the planet gets blown up. And then you see the, the Death Star again, and then it blows up the planet. And then the, the final shot of the movie, which reveals what a complete triumph this was for the rebels, is a still showing an article on the lower left of page 43 of the New Empire Times that devotes a full three sentences to the destruction of the planet. So it's like, yeah, we got some press.